Hi everyone, so I'm here again with my neighbour Tracy. So nice to be back again. And we decided that as you really liked our baking video that we would do another recipe video with two of our favourite soups. So you're going to be doing your salmoreco recipe. Tell us about that. So both of our soups are cold soups. Uh, my salmoreco I absolutely adore. I first tasted it when I was in Spain many years ago visiting my friend. Every day about two o'clock we walk up to the plaza, which is the center area of Carmona, and outside, and we have this wonderful cold soup. Well, I am a new fan because I first had the soup here on that sunny day that we had a few weeks ago, which we haven't seemed to have again since. <laughs> I know, I know. So yeah, I'm a new fan of that soup, and the soup that I'm going to be doing is an avocado cold soup. I really like avocados, and I like the texture of them when you blend them. So this soup is quite thick and creamy, and when it's cold, again, it's just so refreshing. So I think you'll really like that one too. Now we have to say that we don't have a lot of hot days, but when the sun shines to us, that's summer, and we're going to take advantage of it. That's right. <laughs> Shall we get started? Let's do. So Tracy, we're going to start with your Salmer Echo. And with both of these recipes, it is really important that you buy the very best ingredients that you can. And we've just been to our whole food store and bought the tomatoes and the bread and the olive oil is extra virgin. Very important. Best quality that you can get. Mm -hmm. Why don't you start with pouring the tomatoes mm -hmm. and I will start with taking the inside out of the bread. And okay. we can discuss why that is. And I know because you told me about this recipe that you're supposed to blanch the tomatoes, but you don't do that. That's right. In the original recipe it does call for that. I did it both ways, it's a lot more work. Um, I tried it without doing that. It's absolutely the same. If you're going to use a regular blender, I would probably suggest, after they're cored, cutting them up before you put them in. But otherwise, I wouldn't bother with the blanching. I think it's just an extra step that you don't need. And we're all about making life easier. That's right. Cool. So let's go. Okay. So I'm just removing the core of the tomato just by making an incision all around the base and then putting it out. And you can use any good crusty bread like this. I wouldn't use like sliced white bread, um, but I would have it be white, Italian, French, anything like that in any shape. I always take these little pieces of crust, toast them up and dip them in olive oil with a little bit of salt and it's wonderful. A little treat while we're working hard. Yeah. So I've cored the tomatoes and you have cut the centre out of the bread right. and now we're going to start blending. Yes. And you told me about this Vitamix which I never heard of before and now I really want one. And beware, they are expensive but they do a really good job, don't they? This one is probably 17 years old. I had one when I was in the States. Um, it's just a magic machine. It really is like a piece of pro equipment. It lasts, I think, a lifetime. It's totally worth the money. Um, it is so powerful, it has a 2.2 horsepower motor wow. and it just has so much power and the texture that is achieved from using this compared to a regular blender is really astounding. It's just a great piece of equipment, I highly recommend it. Let us get on with our process. So the first blend, we're going to add all the tomatoes. Now we have about 10 tomatoes, 10 to 12 is just about right. And you'll probably get about what, six to eight servings, depending on yeah. how big of a bowl you use. And we just start by putting a few of them in at the beginning. That's right, because you don't want to, you're really supposed to have liquid in the uh, Vitamix. But because we're going to start really slow and because there's so much juice in the tomatoes, um, it's not really necessary. So right. here we go. It'll probably be loud. The scent is just so good. Yeah, it's right fresh. off the line, yeah. right 
off the vine. Okay, so now we're gonna add our bread, which I have torn in pieces, and just let that sit for about five minutes. Just to absorb all of that beautiful yes. flavor. Yes. So we've decided to have a nice glass of wine while we're waiting for the bread to soak. And a lot of people did ask how we became such good friends, and we're neighbours, and we met when we when we had to start clapping for carers on a Thursday, didn't we? Despite our huge age difference, we're so much alike. Yes, we are. And we have very similar tastes. That's right. And it's just been such a wonderful friendship. And we just love doing cooking together, and baking, we do. And shopping, shopping, decoupage. Yeah. So we've got so many interests. Talking. Just, yeah. So it's just really nice. We do. I know. I know. We, and we even love watching TV together. We do. Nick and I recently watched this wonderful series called The Great, about Catherine the Great, mm. and we just adored it. The costumes, the scenery, everything was incredibly fantastic. The acting was really, really good as well. Peter, the not the Great, but Peter's son, who's also Peter, every time he cheers something, instead of saying cheers, he says, huzzah, huzzah. huzzah and then smashes the glass on the floor and everybody else says huzzah and smashes the glasses. So we don't smash the glasses, but we do say, but huzzah. We do say huzzah now instead of cheers. So huzzah. huzzah. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're just going to add a splash of sherry vinegar, very important sherry vinegar. You can usually find it in any good grocery store. Some garlic. I'm going to add I'm going to add one and a half good sized garlic cloves. I'm going to put the lid on. That's very important. Yes, it is. So I have been covered with tomatoes <laughs> before without putting the top on properly. Okay, so we're going to put it down to a low speed again and start. So now we're going to start the third blend, Absolutely. which is adding the olive oil. Right. So we're going to start on a very low speed. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure that it doesn't the fly lid. everywhere. Make sure that the lid stays on. Really slowly. Yeah. And we're adding it in a stream. Right. And I think this is what makes the soup extra delicious. And we always drizzle some extra olive oil on top. Oh my God. to chill this for an hour or so because everything was at room temperature. Um, even overnight, the more it sits, yeah, it the better the flavor is. The next day. Yeah, but it's wonderful. And if you want it at just room temperature, it's still really delicious. So with my cold avocado soup, we're just going to put all of the ingredients into the Vitamix and then blend. We don't need to keep adding one by one and blending. We can just put them all in and that's it. So it's very simple. Voila. So I'm going to start with the avocado. So it's one avocado, medium. And you have a good tip for if your avocado is not yet ripe. Tell us. Right. You take your avocado, you wrap it in foil, put it on a little tray, turn your oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and leave it in there for 10 minutes. Take it out, let it cool, and it should be riper. Good. So the avocado, I'm going to add the cucumber. Would you like to start preparing the mint? Absolutely. This lovely mint, fresh from my garden. Tracy's got a really beautiful garden. Which small. Is a bit, small, but really pretty. And you completely renovated it, didn't you, when you moved into the house? I did. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Because again, we like lots of salt. We do. Some lime juice. I have one shallot, I'm just going to pop in. Now I have some vegan plain yoghurt. Now Tracy is a vegetarian, so most of the things that we eat together we can both enjoy. 
also, as I said before, if she's doing something that might have an egg in or, so, or something like that, then I will have a bit of yogurt, then it's yeah. fine. Just a few one-offs. Yeah. Because that's what life is all about. That's right, compromise. And then I have some ground cumin. So I'm going to take a quarter teaspoon of that. That'll be generous. And there we go. Okay. And lastly, we just going to add in one cup of water. And to finish off, I'm just going to add a few rounds of pepper, just to give it a bit of a kick. Okay, let's taste. Let's do it. There you go. Thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Get the cucumber of the lion. You see how gorgeous, again, the texture yeah, it's is. beautiful texture. Oh. like it? Dora. Good. So good. So we're going to put this in the fridge to chill for a good hour and we're going to enjoy your San Marco lunch. Perfect. So one of the first times that we met for lunch you invited me over and we had your San Marco with this cannellini bean spread. So where does the spread come from? Is that one of your recipes too? Well I sort of improvised. What I did was um, I had been in the Scottish quarters at this lovely Italian restaurant and it was mm. served as a starter on lovely Italian bread. And I thought, oh, I can't make that. Um, and I did, so it's super easy. It is so delicious. Again, everybody will love it. Um, just yummy on like grilled or toasted bread. So we have some cannellini beans, some salt, some garlic, some extra virgin olive oil, some rosemary and some pepper. So what do we do? Just put it all in and do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Okay. One can. Generous amount of salt. Yeah. We both love salt. Perfect. Pepper. Several good brines. Olive oil. Olive oil. Garlic. <laughs> It's that been a long day. Be, that would be garlic. Now, we're throwing in some rosemary, which I just happened to have in the garden, and I thought that would be a lovely extra flavor, which mm. I think would be really nice. Okay. So before we add the olive oil, we're going to mix it first. Yes, let's let's puree the current ingredients, and then again, in a stream, let's add the olive oil, because okay. that's really a very good way, whenever you're adding olive oil, to emulsify the olive oil okay. into whatever you're cooking. Good tip. So we have our salmoreco toasted bread and the cannellini spread and obviously a good glass of wine. A lovely pig pool. <laughs> so we're going to go and enjoy these in the garden. We hope you've enjoyed these additional new recipes and we'll see you again soon. Yes, please come back and visit us again. Bye. Bye. <laughs>